You know, I think we go down in, in, in football folklore as one of the greatest teams not to win. And when people talk to me about it as the years go on and on, they admire you more and they are appreciative more about it after four times because uh, that'll never happen again. Champions are made and cash always follows. But where did it all start? These are the true stories of the blockbuster sports deals that went down in the locker room, boardroom, and between the lines that made many people very, very wealthy. This is The Playbook. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneur Podcast, and I'm here with one of my heroes, mentors. Yeah, right. It is, it is, and sure. a close friend. Just for the next 15 minutes. No, not. we've got 30 minutes, maybe. You got, Who okay. knows? Got 30. <laughs> All good, man. All good. No, I got Andre <laughs> Reed, Pro Football Hall of Fame wide receiver, attended the Super Bowl four different times, which I consider... A, an amazing, remarkable achievement. I know a lot of people give, and we'll talk about it, some of the yeah. bills, some crap for losing, but I'm a Charger fan, and we made the Super Bowl one time, and it's, as a fan, it was the highlight yeah. of my life. I can't ima imagine playing in four different ones, but Andre, welcome to The Playbook. Is that what we call this? That's what the we playbook? call this. All right, I Here got some go. plays for you. It's all nice. good. No, thanks for, being, uh, for inviting me, man. I had a little drama at the house, so it took me a while to get here, <laughs> but I'm here, and sometimes you got to, Things happen, and you just got to get to where you got to go, and you're here, I'm here, so I'm all good. Well, when I think of Andre Reid, I think <coughs> of persistence. And most people, they kind of don't know your story, but you, you went to college uh, to play football. Uh, no, but, I actually went for an education. Oh, see, that's different already. <laughs> football. What did you want to study? <coughs> I wanted to be a cop, man, for really? some reason. Yeah, I, I tell people. Like Shaq. I, yeah, I wanted to be, I actually wanted to be a state trooper like Shaq, and I just wanted to pull somebody over and give them a ticket for no reason. Nice. Even if they went two miles over the speed limit. Well, now you can do it for holding a cell phone. You don't have to be on the cell phone. Yeah, that's you can true. Pull them and, over and for that. There's probably a lot more things that you can go to jail for. Uh, but <laughs> like Tiger. Uh, Did I bring uh, that up too soon? That's another <laughs> story. You know. I feel bad for the guy, but so how how did you end up playing football? If you go to be a cop and you go to this uh, Cutstown, Cutstown, Cutstown. Yeah, sorry. right. Cutstown. It's, it's, it's a conglomerate, so it. man. It's a conglomerate. Come it's on, a mega now. school like Alabama. Occidental. Occidental. Accidentally. Exactly. It's yeah, a great, exactly. great football game. Cuts down versus Occidental. Andre Reed against, I was a DB, you know, weak corner, very weak, mm -hmm. not very fast either, but a weak corner. Could you imagine Andre Reed running a route against me? Mm -hmm. it, it would, I'd have been like Elvis Patterson. I'd be toast. Yeah, you'd be, <laughs> yeah, you'd be the burn up bread for sure. No, you know, Kutztown was, you know, not only just a close to home, I was one of those homebody kind of guys. I like to stay home. Uh, close to home. I had a lot of couple offers, and I was a young kid coming out of college. So I was like a young seventeen year old kid. Wow, uh, coming out of high school. I'm sorry, and it was um, kind of right for me to stay around the house. And Kutztown, you know, gave me an opportunity, uh, not only for the education, of course. You know, my mom and dad are very, were very adamant about that. But football was a secondary thing, and it was uh, I was going to be a small fish in a big pond, and. Uh, at a, so D, some D1 schools wanted you. But yeah, you had, and I just couldn't. You were small and young. Yeah, and I just, I don't know if it would have been the right thing for me. And you know how you make decisions in life. Some are some are good, some are bad. And that just happened to be one of the good decisions I did make, staying you know, close to the house. And they gave me a chance. And <clears throat> I, um, you know, excelled. And I think they the chance that they gave me uh, not only helped me in my football career, but uh, mentally uh, it helped me even more because – Going to school there, I can go home after classes if I wanted to. I wasn't, you know, two thousand miles away from home right. as a young kid, and and I was uh, afforded a lot of things that you know some kids weren't. So I got lucky, and uh, the football program was really good. And people look at Division Two and go, "Ah, oh, you went to a Division Two school." Look at NFL rosters now. There's right. a lot of small small school kids that are made up and in, in are the heart and soul of their rosters, and. You have your big stars, but it's those guys that really put your team over the edge. You know, it's interesting because I, you know, got John Randall, <clears throat> yourself, Jerry Rice, you know, all these great players that went to smaller schools. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you, you, when you're younger and a little smaller and, and you aren't heavily recruited to Alabama, Ohio mm -hmm. State, USC, you have a certain attitude and a certain heart about you. Yeah. And then I, you're young and you start maturing into, I mean, you have one of the, still, I know how old you are. You're, you're a little bit older. Don't say that. You're a little bit older <laughs> than, than uh, me even. But, no, but like you have this unbelievable physique. I'm sure you didn't look like that when you were 17, so you're hard to recruit. Well, I just was that little skinny kid with the afro and 
back then, when I came out in the '80s, the Jerry curls were really big, so I had the Jerry. I was always dripping, like Warren. Yeah, I was always dripping. But you know what? I I felt if I just got a chance anywhere that I in life, you know how it is. You got to make the best of your chances that you get, and it's up to you to take advantage of those opportunities. And regardless of where it is, uh, and and I was small town kid, small town school. Yeah, and and, you, and, and I embraced it. And were that's you scared? What it's about. Like when you when you got drafted, I th- think what sixth round or fourth? Fourth, fourth round. Yeah, fourth round drafted. You know, one of the things that you know, my friend was Vance Mueller played for the Raiders. Oh yeah, when Vance was a small division yeah. three. Oxy. Division three, he, Oxy. Yeah, our offense was Vance left, Vance right. That's why we made the national championship. Yeah, you know, it was awesome. But you know, I asked Vance, I'm like, aren't you kind of nervous? Because there are guys like me that you were playing against, and mm-hmm. in, in the back of your mind, we were ever thinking, damn, you know, I'm going to go against, you know. Cromartie or so, you know, like exactly. You know. And I, I just took it as a, as a, you know, I just got as much chance as anybody else. And and I think I was, and I tell people I was born to do what I did. And again, it, it was afforded to me to, uh, to get drafted in the fourth round from a small school. And back then, it was really rare, rare, um, yeah. to get drafted that high from a small school. And I figure I had as much chance as anybody else to just give me the opportunity to play. And I remember going to the Combine, and this is when ESPN was still kind of New. getting going here a little bit. Uh, you know, Jerry Rice was there and all these big schools, Oklahoma, Ohio State, all these kids. And here's little old me from little old Kutztown. And now that doesn't even exist. And it was like, well, it's still catching. It's still running. It's still all this stuff. And these guys are human beings, and I'm a human just like them. So – I got to put my best foot forward and see what I could do at this level. And that was really the big thing for me coming out of college was, can he take that step to the next level uh, from a small school to the big time? And, you know, uh, obviously I passed that test. Yeah, (laughs) no doubt. You know, you know, obviously you're a hall of famer. Let's talk about the business side, right? It's it's one thing you played for years, you know, years in the NFL, you got passed over when there was a, a, you know, a saturation of wide receivers to be inducted, the Chris Carters of the world, Mm -hmm. all the time. Well, I'm right in there with them, so. You got your turn, and you didn't whine, you know. Never did I hear one piece of news about Andre Reid thinks he deserves to be in there. You let your play speak for itself, and you held many records, right? Mm -hmm. And and you uh, and Jim Kelly together held one of the most extraordinary records is the most, you know, passes and completions together. Uh, And, I mean, just great records, but... Taking that, people don't understand. Here you are, you you finished a great career. You played 15, 15 is that right? 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. So you count the Denver, or oh, that last year. Yeah, right? every Good. time you put on a helmet, you count it as a year. I now. agree. Yeah, you got yeah. paid, man. You got paid, so you that count was, it. You ended yeah. with the Redskins, is that right? You went ended to Denver. with the Redskins in yeah. 2000. I uh, ended up, I uh, was in Denver uh, in 2000 in their training camp uh, with Mike Shanahan in Denver. And then I ended up going to, uh, going to, um, to Washington to finish up. And at that time, I knew, you know, after 16, almost 17 years of playing and 30 years of playing football that, that you know, my time was up. And, you know, some guys go, oh, I'm just going to play as long as I can and get one more. Right. Um, I think you can probably do that now to a certain point back then. Uh, and it might be vers- uh, vice versa. I don't know. But, you know, I'd have to say my upbringing had a lot to do with my success because, you know, if you don't know the big things that are – it's not that the big things are given to you. If you don't know that you you, and you never experience it, you kind of work harder to get to it. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's I was a work hard first kind of guy, and I still do that to this day and try to teach my kids that you're not going to get something for nothing nowadays uh, anywhere. And if you work hard, you're going to get rewarded for it. So that was my mentality, and, and I think, you know, that has carried me through not only my football career but what I'm doing now with, you know, my, uh, uh, my involvement with – with charity and, and the Boys and Girls Club, who I'm very uh, uh, involved with right now. Yeah, and I mean, you are a philanthropist, but you're also a good businessman. You know, what I look for, you know, I'm blessed to be around great people like yourselves, mm-hmm. but but a lot of them don't have an entrepreneurial or a business sense to them. Yeah. You're very, not only disciplined and hardworking, you're on the road more than most people that work, yeah. right? And, and a lot of it's for charity. A lot of charity, you yeah. have a really good business mind. Like, you look at deals with me, and we'll talk talk about that, and, mm-hmm. you, and you'll see through the Shinola and the BS and say, Dave, exactly. that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. Right, and so tell me, on the business side, how did you translate over from being a Hall of Fame football player against all odds? And I think it's even, most people don't realize, I think it's even harder odds that you've overcome that mm-hmm. you're so successful off the field. Because, you know, it's one thing to make the Hall of Fame, but it's another. I don't see many Hall of Famers that are truly successful off the field. They carry yeah. their name, they can do a signing. 
But you're... yeah, you do that. You yeah. def you definitely do that. And you know, I was uh, I thought that carrying over my football career into the next part of life, uh, you you're groomed to do that. And you try to tell these kids nowadays that it's only going to last for so long. You got to have something. Of course, the old adit. You got to have something to fall back on. And a lot of these guys are doing things off the field to get them set for when they're done playing. And a lot of guys don't. We, we already know that. There's some guys that spend their money and just like, okay, well, what do I do 14 next? 14 kids like Cromartie. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I don't care how rich you are. You, yeah, ain't, you ain't man. going over that yeah. one. So I think um, you know, from that standpoint, uh, the, the involvement I am now with, with the Boys and Girls Club, we, we actually uh, are starting a literacy program now that go across the country. We're in five cities right now uh, to uh, – to help kids learn how to read financially. Oh. Yeah, getting financial backing from nice. First Energy, which is a big uh, company that uh, is backing us, um, uh, my foundation on you know the literacy thing, because there's a lot of kids that don't know how to read. Right. And, and there's a lot of kids that go on their whole life not knowing how to read, you don't even know it. And you know I wanna do something where I can make an impact on these kids, not only uh, mentally, but you know, to help them down the road that they're going to need that when they get older. And well, I, I I'm need really it. proud of that. I need it because I've written, you know, seven books. So exactly, more kids that read, exactly. I read some the more money books, I make. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. I, I, got, I got a question because I'm a morning person. I wake up before every morning, have for a long time, and mm. I think it's contributed to my success. Do you wake up early, number one? And two, what's your morning routine? I wake up and I'm just like, all right, let me get this coffee in me because I got to get going. And, uh, you know, I go to work, uh, go work out at the gym. Um, golf is really a passion of my love playing golf. I mean, you know, you see yeah. all the guys, it's like football players, everybody has their golf games that they try <laughs> to get right. And of course, it's a, it's a hard sport. But I think all the things that I'm doing now, uh, I go around the country to different boys and girls club and, and speak at Youth of the Year Awards, uh, the National Youth of the Year Awards I go to every year. I just was in Dallas uh, for the Alumni Hall of Fame. Right. Uh, Anthony Anderson, Skylar Diggins, and uh, you know, one thing that I really realized this year when I went to the Youth of the Year Award is uh, uh, the Alumni Awards is there was a guy that got inducted that actually is with NASA and he was instrumental on a rocket that has been up in space for the last five years and it's going to come back to the Earth in five years with samples from an asteroid. Wow. So that that's just like goes to show you figures. Type yes, of and this, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, exactly. And this yeah. is a boys and girls club kid that started in the boys and girls club. So amazing things are happening and have happened because these kids were on the right path, and somebody gave them those those uh, those qualities uh, early in life. So uh, I'm very proud of that, and and to be a part of that is really uh, a great thing for me. That's awesome. Now, back to sports and you know the, these highlights. What's your favorite sports moment of your career? You've been in four Super Bowls, mm -hmm. and obviously none of them turned out the way that you'd want them. Right. But to make four Super Bowls, I know is extraordinary. What's your your best sports moment? Well, to even put the helmet on and get drafted is is a is a pretty big thing. Um, you know, I think we go down in in, in football folk, folklore as one of the greatest teams not to win. And when people talk to me about it as the years go on and on. They admire you more, and they are appreciative more about it after four times because uh, that will never happen again. It's hard to get to one, let alone go to four straight. And even guys on other teams say that to me, that I played against. So, you know, that's that's a real great accomplishment that I that I really uh, cherish. But, uh, you know, you play the game to win a Super Bowl. You know, the NBA Finals, you play the game to win a championship. But uh, it didn't happen that way. So, you know, I don't think that, and you have the, the second most receptions. In yeah, the Super it doesn't Bowl define me. It'll, it it exactly. never will define me. I think, you know, what you do on the field just defines what you did, and what you do off the field is really your legacy. And I think, uh, you know, I'm f afforded afforded to uh, uh, to use that in many ways. Yeah. And and I'm proud of that. So you gotta you know have a passion for something, and a lot of these kids nowadays look to you, and what you do, um, they look to you for your your business. Uh, savvy, your your entrepreneurship. They look to you that way, and all these business people want to see how you did it, right. and that's you know that's your passion. Speaking of which, you know I believe in something called the dummy tax, right? And I think part of the reason I'm so successful in my life is that I illuminate how dumb I am. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I don't have an ego about yeah, it. Yeah, we all are. We all right. I made yeah, I made yeah. these stupid mistakes, and I always like when you have an exceptional person like yourself 
to make people feel comfortable, you know, what's the <coughs> biggest dummy tax that you paid? The biggest mistake that you made, you learn from, and you move, you're definitely a guy who moves on, right? You're mm -hmm. not going to stumble on those bumps behind you. But, you know, give us a little story about the dumbest, you know, that dummy tax. That, you know, for me, it was buying a golf course. Mm -hmm. You know, wh what do you do in your life that these guys can learn from? Believe it or not, I mean, I've done some dumb things, but <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. Nothing we can I talk have. about on this podcast. I've done, <laughs> I've done some dumb things, but. You know, I would have to say that I've had so many great people around me that I haven't got myself in situations where it's been the thing that really just, boom, just knocks like, you out yeah. and, and kind of closes the door on you. Have and, you made a bad business decision that um, maybe didn't wipe you out, but like invested in something dumb or are you pretty secure I mean, with your money? I'm pretty what you, secure. I mean, I've done some things uh, and I'm pretty frugal. Uh, to so you didn't invent. Point. You didn't invest in one of Vincey Glenn's companies. No, 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 and I didn't try to. In, you know, I didn't try to invent <laughs> something and try to get a patent on something that I knew that wasn't going to work. <laughs> right. uh, I mean, I've been very pretty, pretty smart about that kind of stuff. Um, but I'd have to say I haven't done anything where that I'm regrettable so much that it's done just that I think about it all the time and say, man, why did I do that stupid thing? Yeah. How, how do you deal with you know? And this is one of my problems is I went up and down and up. But you know, when when you have a lot and, you, and you're responsible for a lot of people, mm -hmm. how do you deal with so many people? You know, asking you for money. Want you, yeah. For, like, how how do you deal with that? That's pretty tough, Dave. That is such a, a a question that I think a lot of people get, and especially in our position, you know, you, you're taking care of so much, and you're doing so much, but you you forget about yourself a lot, and sometimes you forget about taking care of yourself and. Uh, it's you hard. Can't give every what you day. don't have, right? If you're not you, taking care of yourself, if you're not taking care of Bernie yourself, Kozart you can't said that. You can't give. You can't give that back. And right. uh, I think uh, you kind of got to keep the keep it level, just like this table. You got to keep it flat, and you got to realize that uh, you know it is what it is, and this is what I could do. This is what I can't do. And they got to be able to take it that way. Have you ever heard, you know, you, you're ma my dad told me this, and I didn't understand until I, I lost everything, but you're made by the people you say no to. Yeah. Right? And you talked about earlier, too, you know, you never surrounded yourself with the wrong people and the wrong ideas. Yeah. You, you always had, like, you always knew when you went to college that I got to stay close to my parents because they, they really are good people. They're good. They're they going to tell me what's right 99.9%. .9 and they might say, you know, you're now your parents are you know, my dad's not no longer here, but my mom is always going to be my mom. She's still going to tell she's me things. Awesome. She's awesome. I got to meet her. My mom's going to still tell me. My mom's hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's yeah, hard. Yeah. She's she's Behind had a every hard great life. Man is a good mom. Yeah, and she's <laughs> had a hard life, but my mom is very stout. Does about she use things. Jewish guilt like my mom, or what's her tool or weapon? No, of she doesn't. She the just tells she just tells it like it is. Oh, the truth that the always truth. hurts worth, right? Oh no, that she just cuts out <laughs> cuts out all the all the stuff and goes straight to the point. And I think that has been a basis of my life because. Uh, they didn't beat around the bush. Right. And, you know, parents nowadays with everything that's happening with the Internet and social media and all that, they kind of had they kind of got to take a step back a little bit. And and then when something happens, they can say, well, see, see what I told you. I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> and yeah. So that's kind of the old thing that people say. I told you so. But I've been very fortunate to have, again, some good parents and they've had hard lives. And I've seen what they went through and, and some of the things that I went through growing up has made me better. And. Hey, sometimes the things that happen to you that aren't good make you a better person. No doubt. That's in my life, make too. Make you a better person. I got two, two final questions. Number one, I ask everybody this because I think it helps. Uh, everyone in the world should be asking when they meet somebody that is successful, what's your favorite app on your phone? My favorite app? Oh, gosh. <laughs> that's a good one, man. I got like 50 of them on here. That, no wonder my battery doesn't work. It's like apps <laughs> it's everywhere. I got to close them out. There should be an app to save your battery. That I don't know. You app. know, people just you know the Instagram, the Facebook, the yeah. Twitter, because we're all in that world now, and and we're all doing things where we put something out and we want the right people to see it, and a lot of times that doesn't happen. Um, I I like to. Uh, what do you use with your kids? Any of the apps with your kids? <clears throat> Uh, a lot of my kids, you know, they're all over the place, so they sent me pictures. It's Instagram mostly with them. So it's Insta. And yeah, and I mean, I have a lot of different things on here, and yeah. and it's mostly your phone calls and your messages. Your yeah, mind. You know, <laughs> I mean, my text messages bother you all the time. It, it's something. No, not at all. Kidding, and I yeah. remember uh, before I got inducted at the hall three years ago, I would have maybe twenty messages, fifteen messages, and and a lot of times I'm talking to myself on those messages. So right. And I remember getting inducted, and my message count went up to like fifteen hundred. Oh my gosh! And it was throwing the phone was throwing out messages because it couldn't hold it couldn't all these messages, all. couldn't handle them. So I, I had um, a wor the worst thing happen this last induction time. Mm -hmm. So I'm friends with TD Terrell Davis, and 
my son and his my neighbor friend they love TD. So when he got inducted, when you know they announced that he would yeah. be, you know, he got inducted. Uh, he hasn't been yet, but got announced. He's not a Hall of Famer not, yet. Not yet. <laughs> Till he but puts that jacket on. But he got yeah. announced. Yeah. I accidentally I meant I meant to go text him congratulations. I accidentally called. You know your phone accidentally calls him. So I'm sure he's sitting there just he's got like, an announced. Dave Meltzer. Dave Meltzer. Exactly. Meltzer's calling me. Exactly. <laughs> Is he stupid? Like, why? Yeah. Oh, God. So I know exactly how you felt. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping his phone got so many phone calls and texts. Yeah. My name never appeared. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, it was an embarrassing moment. Now, last question and most important to me. Um, you've had an unbelievable career. You know, I think the world of you. I just, you know, which is why I chose you to be one of my first guests ever on the show. Is, no, man. I, I am. Well, I'm a big you. fan Appreciate and that. a friend. Uh, moreover. But, you know, what, what if you could choose anything do you want your legacy to be? You know, it, when you're gone, yeah. right, we're all going to be gone, but when you're gone, what, what do you want it to be that people say about Andre Reid? Um, just that I, uh, you know, I was a guy that didn't have a lot and took advantage of every situation he was in, and the opportunities that he had, he got the best out of all those opportunities. And he loves uh, giving back. He loves... Uh, he has a passion just for as much as for giving back than he did when he played on the, on the field. And your legacy is what people are going to remember, of course, from you your whole when you're not here no more. And it's up to you to build that legacy, whatever it is. And you want people to say good stuff about you. And there's going to people that's people that are going to say some bad stuff, whatever. But as long as the people that you love and the people that you know can see what you have done, then that 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 kind of speaks volumes for you. Yeah, you are an overachiever at the the very best, and a humanitarian, a philanthropist. Uh, you, this is a guy. That we ain't done. All, we ain't done, baby. We yeah, ain't done. I know, we but you're done. a guy who always says yes to people, and it's for the kids. Like I've seen you make and evaluate things. People offer you a lot of money for appearances and speaking engagements, mm -hmm. and when charities come to you and ask, I, I see you making sure you can coordinate the time. So that even though you know you want to put yourself at a detriment, but wherever you can, I've seen you give back and inspire so many kids. You even worked, I know, with the Chargers uh, and helped there. And you know, they for those young guys, I know yeah. it made a difference because there were some no names last year that had to pick up for Keenan and et cetera that told me that at the very beginning at camp when Andre Reid came out and told us, you know, to be a professional and mm -hmm. what that meant and to, to it, live it, up, the opportunity is going to come, and it did. Mm -hmm. You're affecting a lot of lights, man. A lot of lives, man, and I really appreciate you. Thank you, I appreciate it, and thanks for having me on your podcast, man. It's it's always good to come up here to Sports One Marketing and hang out at this big building you got, <laughs> and to see these pictures of you and Jim. That's right, John and Lovitz and John Mr. Lovitz, John, <laughs> Mr. Clean, <laughs> Mr. Clean. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, thanks for having me, man. I, I'm I'm very appreciative of of you having me up here and and speaking uh, about a lot of different things. I think that the public doesn't hear you. And they just see you on TV or they see you at different places, but don't really don't know what's inside you. And and thanks for uh, letting me uh, share that with you. Anytime. It's uh, Andre Reed, Hall of Famer, my favorite wide receiver, with Dave Meltzer with The Playbook and Entrepreneur. Thanks so much. It's your craft, right? You're good at what you can do. I'd see a guy on the field, on the sideline, in the locker room, the day after, having an MRI in my hand. But I took the extra step to go upstairs to the video room and review the injury video from the day before. And if I get a good replay angle, it would have been 95% correct.